Carlson, we continue to follow breaking news of a wildfire burning in Davis County. The Snoqualmie fire sparked up overnight in Layton and it's forcing evacuation just south of the Fernwood Recreation Site. ABC4's Jared Jatineni is live at the command center in Layton where that fire stands this morning. Jared, what do we know? Kim, with the U.S. Forest Service, we have an update on the Snoqualmie fire. What's the latest? That's correct. Um, at 11 o'clock here right now, we're going to go ahead and have a partial evacuation opening, so we want to get that word out. We're going to lift, open the areas of 1850, Maxine Drive, 3300 East, and Boulder Drive. The areas that will still remain closed is all of Fernwood Drive, Fernwood Circle, and Snoqualmie Drive. In the homes in that area, they'll still have structure protection from Layton City Fire to uh, stay in that area. Um, we have a Type 3 Incident Command team that will be coming in to help take over the fire. Right now, we're in Unified Command with Layton City Fire. Uh, our, our fire remains to be at 117 acres, 0% contained. We have four crews up on the hill, three helicopters, and we have two, two of the larger helicopters you'll see up here soon. Uh, they'll be helping with bucket drops. They, they have a very large tank, so they can drop a lot of water. And what has changed that makes those neighborhoods able to be, you know, able to go back as opposed to the ones that are now still closed? Uh, well, the, the areas over on the south end of the fire, the fire's kind of moved a little bit away from there, so we don't have as, mu have as much active fire. So the ones more on the north end, there's a lot more active fire. So that's why we're keeping that area closed. How have things gone this morning? Obviously, the weather has just been, has been helping you with the exception of this breeze, but uh, the, the overcast kept things cool for you. Yeah, the, the cooler temperature is definitely helping and lower humi higher humidities. Um, there's been a little bit of rain, but probably not enough to do anything. But we've had a little shifty wind up there. You can tell the smoke's kind of laying back down, going down downhill. Um, things have been going well. We've got several of our crews in here. They're working on building containment li line. They kind of want, they want to flank on both ends of the fire up towards the top. That's kind of our action for suppressing the fire. Any injuries, loss of structure? Uh, no injuries right now. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your question? The latest acreage is still 0%. Yeah, 0% and 117 acres. Structures all right still? Yeah, all the we haven't had any issues with structures, no damage. Uh, things have been looking really good up there. Yeah, it's, we've got some heavier type brush and pine trees up towards the top, so it's, it's burning in there, which takes a little bit. This fire is probably going to take a little longer to get put out versus the um, gun range fire. About how many homes are still on that mandatory evacuation? Um, I don't know exactly how many. What can residents expect? You've got all these helicopters dropping water. How long will it take to put the fire out? It'll probably take a couple days to, to get things really a lot of because we've got heavier uh, fuel type or brush, it takes a lot longer to get that all out. The, the fire tends to smolder around underneath things, so it takes time to, to mop that all up. Um, I was told it was around 200 yards behind some of the houses. Okay, so things are looking really good. They have uh, a big hose lays up there, along with firefighters and the structure engines are all through there. So, you know, it, to protect them is a precautionary. It's not, there's not like an imminent threat at this moment, but it's more of a precautionary to, to make sure that we have every, everything in place in case something happens. Um, I, I think, you know, whenever we get these fires in the front, you know, sometimes we might have not have one for a couple years or there's some space in between, but I think everyone was kind of the top of their game because we just experienced that. Every, a lot of the same structure engines and same folks, firefighters were up here. And so they were to act very quickly and they were already in the mode of evacuating to, to be more efficient. So it went very quickly. And we, we really appreciate all the residents that were you know, helpful and left when we asked them to leave, you know, because we don't want to get anyone hurt and, and we don't want our firefighters to get hurt either. Drones and onlookers, still an issue. Um, yeah, we did have some drones this, early this morning or last night. And so 
yeah, that's definitely, we can't, we can't fly if they're flying around, so it's a, don't do it. Have there been any more reports, or is that just in the overnight hours? That was just in the overnight that I've heard, heard about. We're still working on that. We, we, they're, our fire investigators are work. Yeah, we don't know yet. So when we have a type three that team that comes in, it's just more support to the firefighters, the different positions to make sure that everything's running more smoothly, um, more oversight. You could say it's easier to get resources because the complexity of the fire has grown to enough that. We really need to get stuff here quickly, so w with that comes more resources. You worked on the fire in Bountiful and similar in terms of the overnight hours, but what would you say the main difference was that homes here did not burn? Well, with the other, with the with the gun range fire, that we had 30 mile an hour winds that night, and that storm that passed over, so that created a lot of issues, and fire was moving very quickly. This fire was more just the normal down canyon winds, down slope, so it was a lot, a lot more mellow fire fire behavior, which you know made a big big difference. Well, that was I guess the worst case scenario. This is kind of best case. I would definitely say it's a yeah better case yeah. It certainly looks a lot more hazy and smoky in the last five ten minutes. Is that just from the little bit of rain that we've got? Do you think or uh, you know, the water drops? Or? It, well, it's probably because we've had a shift in wind. Uh, and so it's kind of blowing it back down this way. Anybody anything that we're not getting? Any support there that we were talking about? Uh, Maybe donations. Oh, if, uh, so our firefighters are well taken care of when we, we get here. And, and so if, if people were thinking about donating, monetary donations are, are much better for the red, to take to the to Red Cross. We do have a evacuation center that's open at the... Mountain View Baptist Church and people can go there. So if people are thinking about helping out, definitely take some donations over there if, if you want to. I guess there's some people worried about their livestock that live up there. What do you have to say? Uh, they have a place to take them. It's the, Dav Davis County Fairgrounds. the Davis County Fairgrounds. You can take the large animals over there. I guess people are worried they can't get their livestock. Oh. Um, they can call the Davis County Animal Care and Control. Okay, they can call the Davis County Animal Control. Here's a number. 801. It's 801 444 2200. And we probably can figure out a way if we need to get up there to get them out. Uh, they can, we can get that figured out for sure. Yeah, that, that, that number will help with getting your animals out. As we get to the afternoon hours, what do you all expect to see? Looks like the cloud cover is pretty much staying for the time being. What, what are you all expecting? Um, you know, we're hoping the, the weather will stay cooperative and the cooler temperatures, like we said earlier, should help. Uh, again, I'll just see what's going on up there with fire behavior. The topography changes a little bit as you get up higher, a little steeper. So we'll, we'll definitely have probably fire behavior throughout the day. Um, I don't see anything out of the norm as far as like a wind event coming through or a red flag warning. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, I'm not the expert on that one. I, I know the smaller ones with the their bucket with the buckets, like 180 80 gallons up to maybe 200. I'm just throwing some guesses out. The the large ones are tanks. I was hearing it was a couple thousand gallons in there, so it's quite a bit more. But again, that might not be correct. But it's a lot more. <laughs> Do you know where they're? Uh, there's several ponds around here, and then I know they're, they're putting up, we call it a pumpkin. It's kind of like a portable tank that we, the fire trucks that will, will fill those. All right, folks, just joining us this midday, you're listening yeah. to a live press conference with the U.S. Forest Service, Kim Osborne. We do have an update. Four neighborhoods in the area are off of evacuation. That is 1850th. Maxine Drive, 3400 East and Ballard Drive. You can still see the Snoqualmie fire sending thick plumes of smoke into the area. The fire is moving southward, so that's why we were able to lift some of those evacuations. The fire is still 117, can you give us uh, burning 117 yeah. acres and is 0% contained. Right now, crews are on that mountain working to increase containment.
we had just the normal down canyon winds. The U.S. Forest Service says calm weather is keeping the Snoqualmie fire at bay. Overnight, a passerby called 911 after spotting smoke billowing from the mountain. This fire, we have a lot more, if you look up on the mountain, there's a lot more oak brush and trees, and, and so we've got a lot of fire smoldering around on the base of that. The U.S. Forest Service says almost 100 firefighters and other crew are attacking the flames by land and by sky. You're dealing with cheat grass, but you're also dealing with this mountain oak, which is low growing and dense. So it's, it's about a mile an hour. You're going super slow. It's a slow crawl, um, a very steep terrain. It's rugged. Fernwood Recreation Site is in close proximity to the fire. We're going to be able to get up and, and get some of these camps sites that are up above so we can clear them out uh, before the fire reaches them. Crews hope to get the fire under control. Until then, there is a no-fly order in place for this area. It's illegal to fly in a fire zone that has, has that. And when they do fly that, we have to shut down all air operations. So that can be at a crucial time. Also, crews are urging you to stay about 500 feet away from an operation site at this hour. Again, no injury to report. Again, this is a common camping site. The U.S. Fire Marshal is on site investigating the cause. Very scary for folks who are evacuated overnight, but it appears crews have some sort of handle on this fire. Reporting live, Jared Jotanini, ABC4 News.